Hey guys, in today's video, we're checking out a wireless system for your PA speakers. This is the Alto Professional Stealth Pro Wireless System. It's a great option if you need wireless to transmit to your active speakers for like a PA system. This thing is great. It has options for scan and sync. You get an RF meter to see if you're on a clean channel. It's a true diversity wireless system, which means it's a lot more stable. You can set a delay to it. It has squelch control. You can set it to mono or stereo. I've been using it at quite a few of my gigs over the last couple of months, and it's been working great. And I'm gonna see if this is something that could be right for you. I do wanna say many thanks to Sweetwater for sending this product over for review for the channel. While Sweetwater is the sponsor of this video, all the opinions in this video are my own, and I've been using this at a lot of my shows, and it's worked extremely well for me. If I didn't like it, I wouldn't feature it on the channel. If you do decide it's right for you, purchase links to purchase from Sweetwater will be available down below in the description. That's enough of the intro. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. And let's check this thing out. So for setup and what's included, so this is the transmitter and these are the two receivers right here and you get six different antennas. So you're gonna attach two antennas to each of the devices, two on each receiver and then two on the transmitter. There's not a specific one for the transmitter, there's not a specific one for the receiver, which makes it easy. You get three of these power cables. So I'll plug those in here in a minute. They're obviously what power the transmitter and the receiver. You get these cables right here, which come out of the receiver. So this is a pretty specific cable, but you can see it goes into the bottom of the receiver right here. And then and the XLR will go into your speaker. It is nice that it has like the pin, so it's really tough to unplug. That is a very specific cable. I do recommend getting a backup of this cable specifically. So one of the things that I really like about this is that they give you all the hardware that you need in order to mount this into a rack. So you have a couple of options here. You have the short ones right here, which I love that they give you the option to just rack mount it in a half rack like this. So you can put something next to it in a rack. It drives me nuts when a company only gives you like the long one like this, and it has to take up a full U of rack space when the unit itself only takes up a half U. I really like that. Although this one is odd because they put the antenna port right here. So I'm not really sure why they did that but this half U rack is really nice right here. And you also do get this other one right here if you want to mount two of them together in a rack because it's not quite a half U of rack space. So this is a way to get two of them in a rack together. Really nice. You will need to get the BNC cables in order to bring the antennas to the front of the rack, which you definitely want to do. Don't put the antennas in the back of the rack. Always bring them to the front. Of course, they give you screws for attaching all that together. Now, this is cool. They give you this bolt right here. You can see there's a hole at the top of the receivers. So this is for mounting it to like a speaker or something that has this as an option. So you can see that's in there and you can screw this in and install it kind of as a permanent spot or make sure that it'll never fall over because it's attached to the speaker. That's a really cool design too. I hadn't seen that before. And of course, they also give you Velcro so that you can attach it to a speaker as well. And I specifically haven't done this yet because I was saving it for the tutorial video, but I am going to put these on there because that's just a convenient way to have these attached. I've been using gaff tape and it's been working well, but the Velcro is definitely a really nice touch. There is one accessory that I am going to recommend, and it's this guy right here. This is an IEC cable splitter that allows you to daisy chain power off of it. So this end will go into your speaker, and then you plug in your IEC cable into this cable right here. So it still powers your speaker like normal. However, now you have this outlet right here so you can power the Alto Stealth Wireless, which is really awesome. This is what I've been using for it. It works incredibly well, and I'll leave links down below so you can get these for yourself. Highly recommend getting these. These have been a huge huge help for using these with my band. So some settings on the transmitter. So you have the switch back here for mono and stereo. So if you're just doing a mono single transmitter output, you can set that here. However, you can set it to stereo as well. So back here, this is where you're going to plug into your mixer or whatever is used to send the signal to your PA system. And the thing that I really like about it is that it's a combo jack. So you can plug in XLR or quarter inch, which is really nice. Have the option for both. And so for this video, I'm just gonna plug in this dual quarter inch system because I'm gonna plug in my iPad and just show you a few things. So I'm to plug in stage tracks three which is what i use to run backing tracks for my band i have a video on it if you're interested in checking it out but the reason why i'm going to do this is because the left and right are going to have a very different signal the right side contains the click and the left side contains all the tracks so you can see the audio meter is very different on each one so here you can see the audio coming in on the left and coming in on the right but you do get a meter on both the left and the right here in the front so you can manually change the frequency right here so you can push the frequency button and then push these up and down buttons to scroll through some of the different 
different options. You have 700 different channels to choose from. If I want to change the right channel, I can push the frequency button again and do the same thing and set them accordingly. Although I will show you how to scan and sync from the transmitter to the receiver here in a minute, which is really cool. You do have this sync button. When you push it, you can see the sync light blinking. I'm going to show you what to do with that when I show you what to do with the receivers here in a minute. And you can also adjust the volume as well. So you can push the volume and you can bring it down to negative 60 or all the way up to 10. And again, you can do that on both sides. Nice and easy, pretty easy to figure out. So on the receivers right here, I'll show you scan here in a minute. So for frequency, again, you can click it and then just manually scroll through some of the frequencies. Now, the thing that I love about this is you can see the RF meter here on the left. So if I go to a channel like this, it says, oh, someone is already broadcasting on this channel. This does happen to be the Alto Stealth transmitter right now. So if I turn the transmitter off, you wouldn't see these bars, but I did want to just show you that it does pick up an RF signal. So if you turn on the receiver and your transmitter is off and you have a lot in your RF meter, that means that that channel is already being used by someone else. It's really nice that they give you that. So you can push the scan button. Now what it's going to do is you can see it's going to search through until it finds one with no RF bars and it's going to set it to that. So in this case it found 569.825 and it has set it accordingly which is awesome. If for some reason I'm not happy with that one I can also manually scroll through this. If you want to set it manually push the frequency button and then the up and down arrows until you find one that has a no RF reading. But scan has worked really well. Next, you have this button for left and right. So this is pretty cool is that it'll have two different ones saved. So watch when I switch to the left, it goes to a different channel. When I go to the right, it goes to a different channel. So next you have a delay, especially if you're throwing your speakers pretty far. And the thing that I really like about this is you can see here that when I adjust it, so right now I'm adjusting it in milliseconds and you can see it says delay on. It gives you a sign that lets you know that delay is on. So if you're on the main menu, if you don't want delay, you definitely don't want to see that. So it's nice that it gives you a warning. Now the thing that's cool is I can push the delay button again and it'll go to feet. So I can adjust it of how many feet I'm away from my main speakers, which is awesome. And you can push it again and also set it to meters. But either way, it gives you the delay on signal. I love that. And then last but not least is squelch. So squelch is definitely a very important thing to understand. I feel like I need to do a dedicated video on this. But squelch basically means if the strength of the wireless signal drops below a certain level, it will mute the audio instead of getting that interference noise. So the way they word it in the manual it says a higher squelch setting provides better protection against interference, but also reduces the signal range. Squelch is a very specific thing and it just depends there's no set it and forget it with squelch but this is what's cool so let me go let me find something that's getting a little bit of interference so i'm going to change to a different frequency here so you can see on channel 699 there's getting a little bit of rf reading what i'm going to do now is i'm going to set the squelch signal up until that meter goes away which goes away pretty quickly which means that it's getting some rf signal somewhere nearby it's picking up something so if you are basically getting RF on every single channel in the area that you're playing, adjust the squelch setting. You will lose a little bit of the range distance that this can transmit, but you won't get the interference. That's awesome. That is incredibly helpful with this. If you guys do want a dedicated video on squelch, leave a comment down below. Now this is really cool. I love this. So remember that sync button on the transmitter? I'm going to go ahead and enable that and you can see the sync blinking. Now watch what happens when I scan for a new channel. I found a good one. I'm going to push the scan button again since I'm happy with it and see how it changed on the receiver. So it sent the channel to the transmitter from the receiver. Nice, easy way to scan and sync for the best channel. So there you go. Those are basically how to control everything in the Alto Stealth. As far as specs for the important ones, this is a digital system. The frequency range has a 30 megahertz bandwidth of 540 to 570 megahertz. The operating range is 330 feet line of sight. Frequency response is 50 hertz up to 17 kilohertz. And this is a true diversity wireless system. If you're interested in anything else, go ahead and pause the screen now. As far as price, as of the time of shooting, it's listed at $749, and I will have purchase links down below in the description of where you can purchase it from Sweetwater. And also, if you do need to get an expander pack, if you want two more of them, you can do that for $449. Again, purchase links to all of them will be down below in the description down below. Okay, so my experience with this. So I've used it at quite a few gigs recently. The first gig that I used this at, in all honesty, it wasn't very far from the transmitter to the receivers, so I didn't really need to do it. However, 
the speaker that was over here next to me, it went over by around where like an opening was. So people could go through there. Hopefully they didn't. But I mean, we all know that people still will walk through gear sometimes. The thing was, it was nice to not have to have an XLR cable to go over there and be a potential trip hazard. So it actually worked out really well. No surprise, it worked out great and it didn't drop out. It actually has never dropped out on me at any of the gigs that I've done. And while it wasn't that far of a distance to throw, I also had a brand new wireless. There was no way I wasn't going to use my brand new wireless at my first gig with it. Gig after that, we played Oktoberfest. It's a really fun venue. It's called Scruffy Murphy's. If you're ever in Denver, come on by. The way that it works is there's the stage and then there's the door and then that's where, and then we put our speakers across the door. It's really nice not to have to run a XLR cable that far of a distance and it worked incredibly well. I did it for another couple of gigs, a couple of weddings that we did and it worked really well, but that wasn't like the real stress test. I've had this for a while and I actually wanted to wait until the gig that I just did a few days ago where I had to bring the main PA speaker and then some satellite speakers quite a ways away from the main speakers. Pretty big event, well over a thousand people there and they wanted to have a PA system for the front, like in front of the stage and then they wanted some to be thrown quite a ways away so that people more in the back could hear it. This thing worked incredibly well. And the thing is, is that place is notorious for having a lot of wireless signal going on already. I did a scan, there was a ton of stuff going on and this thing didn't drop out once. <laughs> And the thing that's crazy about that, one of the speakers had direct line of sight. The other satellite speaker that I had to run this to, my drummer was completely blocking it. So the transmitter to the receiver, the drummer was blocking it. That is not how you want to do wireless in almost any situation. Line of sight is almost always the best. And this brings me up to a good point is that looking at reviews online, it's rated very well, except for one comment. They said this worked so well during sound check, but then people showed up and then it stopped working. I'm really upset and they gave it one star. The thing is, is that this is a very, very common mistake when using wireless music gear. And I addressed this in my video about five common mistakes when using wireless music gear. Line of sight is always best from the transmitter to the receiver. So if you're doing sound check at say like a wedding ceremony or something like that, you check, everything sounds good. And then a bunch of bodies fill in, that's going to block the signal, the wireless signal from the transmitter to the receiver. So always just make sure that you have good, clear line of sight. Any wireless is going to do that if you don't have good line of sight. I've actually had to do that before where I've set up for like a ceremony for a wedding and then a bunch of people got in the way and actually had to hold up the wireless receiver in order to get it to work. Always make sure you have good line of sight. That does not mean your wireless is not working. It means you need to set it up in the best way possible. Again, I do recommend watching my five common mistakes when using wireless music gear to make sure that you're not making some of these mistakes. But yeah, it's worked extremely well and I'm very glad that I have this in my arsenal. So since I'm doing a review, what are the only cons or possible negatives about this? None of these are a deal breaker for me. They might be for you. I do think it's a tiny bit high priced. I mean, not really because it works really well. So if this is something that you need, if you need a wireless for your PA system, it's incredibly valuable to have it. It might seem a little high priced to some people, but other people it's worth every penny. It's up to you to make that decision. I do wish that there was a little bit wider frequency bandwidth. So 30 megahertz is a good bandwidth to find a clear signal in. I usually like anything about 40 megahertz up to consider you know, high end and professional level wireless. That just means you have more channels to find a clear signal. I'd like it to be up at 40, but again, 30 is good. I wish that the price would come down a hair or that the bandwidth would go up a little bit. I think the thing that would turn the most people off to this is that it is not battery powered. So if you need 100% a battery powered system, this isn't for you because it does need power in order to work. However, like I said, this thing has been so helpful. This thing has worked really well. And I highly recommend you get this because then you can plug in the power to your speaker and daisy chain the power to your receivers off of this. It works incredibly well. It's nice to not have to worry about the battery dying or anything like that. It just runs continuously. I definitely love that. Also, I did find a case that fits it very well. It's a fairly cheap case by a company called Case Matrix. I really didn't want to take the antennas off every time that I took it away and put it away. So if you aren't going to put it in a rack case, I will link to that case that I've been using as well. So like I said, this thing has worked really awesome for me. I'm very glad that I have it in my arsenal and many thanks to Sweetwater for sending this over. Again, if you are interested in purchasing this or any of the other items I talked about in the video, there will be purchase links to purchase from Sweetwater down below in the description. So that's basically it. If you guys found this video helpful, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button. It does a ton to help out my channel by feeding the YouTube algorithm, so I would sincerely appreciate it. Also using those purchase links down in the description is also a free way to support the channel at no extra cost to you. So two other videos of mine to check out. So first of all, Alto Stealth does make a portable version of this that does run on batteries. It is way cheaper. It has way less channels. It should not be considered a professional level 
wireless system. And you can check out my video of my review that I did on that. Also recently I did a review on the Everse 8, which is a great speaker. That was also something that Sweetwater sent over for me to check out and it's worked incredibly well. Definitely check out my video on that. So check out both of those videos by clicking the links on your screen now. Thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any other cool gear recommendations you want me to check out, please leave them as a comment down below. Always interested in checking out new gear. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Scott Yo Music. Once again, thank you to Sweetwater. Thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.